Hey everybody, it's Lewis Porter Jr. Today is January the 1st, 2014. And since everybody's doing these whole, you know, wishing everybody a good year things, I decided to do one for myself. Um, I, everybody knows, I'm just picking up some stuff at my desk too. Everybody knows uh, 2013 was an incredibly difficult year for me. Uh, with my wife's cancer and everything. And, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you all know or, or mentioned or just said it. My wife is currently in hospice. So, you know, it's, this has been going on since before Thanksgiving. And, you know, it's just a long process and it's, we're just going through it. And we know what the end looks like because, you know, when we first got the disease, it was very tough. And, you know, I worried, I worried that she would pass away, you know, Thanksgiving or Christmas or even now New Year's. I didn't think that would even happen. But I'm very thankful for the time I've had with my wife. Um, even that time I'm having now, um, I know there's going to be an end to this, and it's not, it's not the ending I wanted. I mean, we've only been married, you know, a little over five and a half years. I got a fantastic son who's three and a half, and, you know, I live with my mother-in-law, and she's been fantastic, and this whole situation's been incredibly stressful. But at the same time, it's, it's got me a chance to be focused on what's really important, and I really haven't been focused on a lot of stuff lately. I've been just focusing on my wife, I'm sure you understand. But 2014 um, is going to most likely be an incredibly difficult, if not the most difficult year of my life. And I know that. You know, I'm mad enough to admit it's not going to be good. But at the same time, I'm extremely thankful for the moments I got to spend with my wife. I was lucky enough to, to basically meet her truly by accident mess up the first time we were trying to get together, mess it up, it was my fault. And then, you know, thankfully enough, God was even able enough to put an accident that told us her car. She walked away safely, not unharmed, but gave us a chance where we could meet again and start again and then build the life we have now. So I, I mean, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm just amazed how lucky I am to be with such a great wife and she's fantastic. And, you know, with that said, you know, it, this is going to go on for as long as it is. You know, if you're here for the RPG stuff, just give me a few minutes. i got to get through all this. You can understand. You know, it's, it's you know, I I don't want to talk about it because it's not in the sense of I don't want to talk because it's not going to happen. I just don't want it to be, to be everything I talk about. You know, it's, it's, it is, it is. It's a big piece of my life, you know, caring for her. Oh, and if you're wondering, she's at home. For those who don't know, she's at home with us. She's at hospice. She's literally, you know, two doors down. She's in Lucas's old room. Uh, we converted for her, so she's been there. And, you know, she's around friends and family, and they're coming to visit, and they're up here, and giving hugs and kisses, and, you know, that's that's what's important. But for me, as the publisher, you know, I'm a publisher, and I have responsibility to the guys who work for me, you know, but this is how they earn their money. So I'm always trying to be focused on things I want to do. So, I've been kind of split, because I've been, you know, thinking about a million and one things to do, and what I want to do, and what I focus on, what I want to focus on. And I'll tell you, the biggest thing that's really surprised me, and kind of was really surprising, is that Obsidian Apocalypse has done as well as it has. I mean, so many people have bought it, so many people have given rave reviews of what they love about it, what they think is really, really good, to the point where I'm like, well, you know what, let's start focusing on some more projects for that. So with that, of course, we're going to start be doing, we're going to start doing some monsters. Some more monsters, I think, is a good way to start. Um, I think tying in cool-looking monsters with the setting will make it better. Um, I've been talking to several other, other, um, I guess it's say third-party guys who do horror-related stuff, or have been attempting to do horror-related stuff, thinking, hey, why don't you tie yourself into Obsidian Apocalypse? It's, you know, there's already a fan base out there, there's already people like it. You know, we're trying to be, and, you know, by accident or by choice, I don't even know how I describe it, you know, I'm, I'm trying to become the cornerstone of horror in Pathfinder. You know, we, we, we built Obsidian Apocalypse from the original Obsidian Twilight. And the concept was always Dark Sun plus Ravenloft. And I think we've expanded out of that just general idea. I mean, we still have that at the core, but we're really building on some other stuff of horror. And I've for myself, I've been watching more and more horror stuff and figuring out, oh, this is a cool monster. Let's do this. Hey, why hasn't anyone done that? What? So I'm also looking at my, you can't you can't see it, my, my two Ravenloft box sets over there, going through old PDFs and looking. So I'm just like, I think there's enough good horror stuff we can make and focus on. Um... Rich Redman has been kind enough to actually um, lead the charge in this. I've been slacking on my duties to talk to Rich about what I want to do, but I've made a list, which is somewhere around my messy desk, because my desk is just ridiculous, of uh, what we're going to do. And 
expect to see some traditional stuff. Expect us to start branching out in different areas of horror. I mean, we might be doing a Gotham toolkit. I say Gotham. <sighs> Gothic. Maybe Gotham. Ooh. Freudian slip. Maybe a cool idea came out of there. See, that's what happens a lot. Uh, I think about doing a Gothic version for um, City Apocalypse, but I think it'd still be kind of cool. Um, and, you know, I'm saying there's just so many different specific pieces of horror you can do. I mean, the basic setting is post-apocalyptic survival horror. That's been the focus. But we did, you know, bio, bio-terror horror. We did fallen angel devil horror. We've done traditional zombie apocalypse horror. You know, there's still, you know, there's Wolverine. Oh, Wolverine. <laughs> That's funny. Werewolf horror. You know, that whole animalistic, there's that kind of genre. There's, you know, there's specifically Japanese horror, which is a little more ghost stories, a little more freakier psychological stuff. You know, there's, there's so many different... There are so many different splinter pieces in the horror itself that you can go and twist and tie into this. So I'm going to really have a fun time doing some of that stuff. I'm also going to be looking at some of the old 50s movies that I... I'm, everybody knows, if you don't know, huge 50s sci-fi fan. Love them. Um, the Day the Earth Stood Still, Them, <laughs> um, uh, uh, The Day the, uh, the Earth Stood Still, Them, uh, The Haters from Mars, The Blob, the original thing, and even the remake. I mean, those are cool things I think would work really well in Obsidian Apocalypse. And I think people would like to have that. So we're going to probably start doing more of that kind of stuff. So expect to see that very, very soon. Um, uh, we're working on that. We also have some other um, Neo Exodus projects we're still working on. We're, you know, we're always working on Neo Exodus. There's always a little stuff we're adding to that. But I think, you know, just for my own personal... I've been working on Neo Exodus a long time. I think Obsidian Apocalypse gives me a great break from it. But at the same time, people are like, oh, we're loving it, there's stuff, you know, we want more stuff. Hey, guys, there's like 60 products out. So, I mean, there's stuff out there. It's not like we've, we've left you guys high and dry. And with City Apocalypse, we only have a couple products. Let's start building that up. So maybe, you know, by the summer, we'd like to do maybe something cool, maybe a big project. Um, also, I've had, uh, for all those who are interested, we did, uh, we were going to we were gonna do our Codex uh, Torment Kickstarter. Um, most likely I'm not right now, and probably it's going to be on the shelf for a while. Um, specifically, you know, Green Running just did their, their template one. They're going to give you tons of monsters, the templates that work with great monsters. I don't even know if it's necessary for us to do monsters at this point, because I don't want to... I mean, just look, there's four, four beast theories, two more horrors. There's tons of monster books. If I'm going to do a monster book, it's going to be so different and unique that people have to pick it up and go, wow, I've never seen these monsters before. I'm so glad you made them. And I don't know if if I'm inspired enough for that point. Um, we also had the other Kickstarter that we still were kind of, uh, you know, all over the all-girl, I call the all-girl, the all-girl Kickstarter. Um, that's also on hiatus, um, you know, because all this stuff is done. And funny enough, a couple days ago, um, I was looking through, just, just, and this just came out of nowhere. I still don't know where this came from. I was looking at um, Dungeon of Day, and I kept saying, wow, I really like Dungeon of Day. I really like what they tried to do. I think it was a smart idea. Um, you know, Adventure, Adventure Week has kind of taken that niche over a billion adventure, which I think is a good idea, but I kept going, why can't we do, you know, gigantic, enormous, enormous dungeons? And then I pulled out, um, the world's largest dungeon, and I was like, you know, you need a mixing of both of these. You need to make it Dungeon a Day and the world's largest dungeon. And then I went to even crazier, because I said, this is the biggest problem I had with Dungeon a Day and... I, I think, this is my opinion, that I've known talk to the guys at, um, <laughs> I almost said Rogue Genius, that, at Super Genius. <laughs> um, well, they were Super Genius when they did it. Uh, about, you know, the, because it seems to me the biggest problem being is that it's, it's a money suck. If you write this stuff for it and you write it, you got to pay out that kind of stuff, you got to pay out for the art, and then people have to subscribe to it, and, you know, it's, it's, I think that's, I, that kind of puts a lot of barriers, trying to get people to swear. I just think personally, maybe just give away for free, you know, Try most likely to do a freemium business model. In the case of, okay, the entire, you know, we start with the first, let's say the first 10 rooms. Boom, we have it online. We, so we go, so we go live in November, not November, just sorry, March. And every day, every day of the week, Monday through Friday, we release another room. We open a room. Here's a room here. There's a room here. There's a room here. There's a room here. You keep adding on to the room. You keep building out the dungeon accordingly. Would people be interested in something like that? I mean, a room a day isn't a lot. 
But at the same time, if you and your buddies are playing it, boom, start this room. You know, you might get through, what, seven rooms? Maybe in one session? Maybe? Maybe not? Maybe four or five? If it's five rooms in a session, that's a whole week's worth of rooms. The next week, the next week comes out. The next Saturday, we get another rooms to play. And just keep it open. Just keep it open, and anybody can, can, can look at it, can see it, and maybe even possibly tie it into... Uh, the D20 PSRD or even Paizo's um, SRD, whatever 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 it is, and just make it into a free source anybody can use and anybody can enjoy. Because I think the the problem was the cost issue. I think there's a way around the cost issue. Maybe I talk to the guys at Rogue Genius real quick and kick an idea to them. But that's where we are with that. That's a that's a back of the head idea that I'd like to do. That I think would be very very cool if done well. But as I always said, the biggest problem with writing adventures is, is that you got to write them. And because, I mean, let's be honest, not everybody can write an adventure, but everybody can write an encounter in one location. Everybody can do that. And, you know, once you build the map, it's like, boop, boop, here's your map, boom. Okay, how does the map break out? Boop, boop, boop. And then just add to the map. That's something that uh, I definitely learned <laughs> from watching uh, lots of lots of stuff. You know, start from the center and build out. Don't start on the edge. Start from the center and build out from there because cooler things happen when you build out from the center. That's just my feeling. So... But like I said, this is this is this is just a nice little 2014. What we're gonna be doing, rah rah, you know, support. Oh, by the way, uh, I wanted to thank everyone. I didn't actually say it, but I, in my head I did, but I didn't say it out loud. Obsidian Apocalypse um, has been selling like hotcakes. Um, thank you so much for people liking it. Um, like I said, we're trying to bring some more stuff that we did in the original Obsidian Twilight into this, including even revamping the old. Obsidian uh, Eclipse two uh, two source books we did. I'm thinking about updating everything to the modern Obsidian Apocalypse. So if you have the original, we'll update that, and I'm hoping soon. Soon. Um, also with that, we're going to be sending out copies of the of the printed book if the thing won't let me upload it correctly. But apparently there's some kind of issue, and I've been dealing with this for the last day and a half, and it's starting to irk me. But I'm going to get this thing fixed, and we're going to get these books out of here, because A, you deserve them if you're a donor. If you're a donor, hey, you get a free book, that's nice. B, I want the retail stores to get their copies so they can start selling and pushing it, because, I mean, if you've seen that cover, the cover's awesome, so bada-boom, bada-bing. I, mean, I just think more people will be more interested in this type of setting. Just a thought, just a thought. So, I'm going to get out of here. It's almost 3 o'clock my time. I'm going to probably go take a nap, because that's what serious RPG publishers do when they want to get creative. They take a nap creative. Alright, talk to y'all later, and you have a good new year, and relax. And oh, by the way, tell the person you love if you love them, because you never know. You know, you never really know. Just a thought. Talk to y'all later.